Welcome back to the channel. My name is Abel. We are back with Football Manager 2021 and Hammer Time with West Ham United. Aston Villa are the team we're going to be playing in today's live match. A few bits to get through though before we get to that. First of which is uh, we did a couple of draws. Um, now I did record these previously so I'm going to add that footage in in a second. Uh, we had the draw for the uh, Europa League group stage and for the third round of the Carabao Cup. So a couple of bits thrown in there. Uh, then we're going to come back to present day as we're recording this and go through um, a couple more transfers that I've made, then we'll go through the games off camera, and then we'll jump into the Villa match. So quite a bit to get through today, hopefully it won't be too bad, but I'm going to throw back the past me, who's going to take you through those draws. Third round of the Carabao Cup, not sure who we're going to get here, let's just draw all teams and let's see. Uh, it's Nottingham Forest, so we've avoided the Premier League side, we've got Championship Nottingham Forest, so that's not too bad there. So the draw for the Europa League group stage has us in seed three, that was kind of what I was expecting, we could have been seeded fourth, but no, we're seeded three, so that's not too bad. So, obviously we can't get the English teams. Man City missed out on the top four last season, so they're in the Europa League with us. They're in pot one. Uh, and the Europa League is reduced to eight groups now because of the addition of the Europa Conference League. Uh, the Europa League goes from 48 teams to 32 teams. Uh, group F, we won't be able to go into because of Man City, but they got Astana of Kazakhstan. I feel like City are going to walk their group, whoever they get. So Group A doesn't look too good with AC Milan and Anderlecht. Uh, then we've got Celtic and Marseille in Group B, which doesn't look too nice either. Sporting and Victoria, Group C, wouldn't be too bad. CSK Moscow and Ludogorets wouldn't be too bad. Copenhagen and Mission Gladbach, that seems quite nice. Leon and Dynamo could be tough. Basel and Frankfurt. We, some, I've, some of these we could get through I don't want to be in A and B definitely not and G doesn't sound too good if we can avoid those three I'll be pleased okay we've avoided Milan and Anderlecht oh Celtic and Marseille that's a tough group for a Europa League group that's very difficult we're going to struggle to get out of that let's uh, finish up the pot three then so in the fourth pot we've got Nantes Santa Clara Trabzonspor Lech Poznan Wolfsberger Nizhny Novgorod, Trivana, and Sarajevo. I don't really like Lech. They're probably the ones to worry about here. I don't know too much about Santa Clara. Okay, let's see. So Sarajevo going with Bosnia. We've got Nizhny Novgorod. Now, the problem with that is that Russia's a long, long way away. And one of the things that they've changed for FM21 is that if you do play fixtures, especially internationally, a bit further away, then that is going to have an effect on your conditioning. So if we've got a trip to Russia and back before a Premier League game, that's going to take a lot out of the people that go to that game and play in that game. We're going to do Villa today, and I will come back once we get to that game. So, um, I guess future Andy will take over from here. Thank you very much, past me. So yeah, Villa is the game today. Last episode, we just about got a win against Leeds United. So yeah, it was 1-0 at Ellen Road, and Andre Gomez scored the goal. It was in the 95th minute, so very, very late. And yeah, we had a very tough start to our season. We had this Leeds game. Off camera, we faced Spurs... Arsenal and Manchester United so we had a really really tough run so last episode I mentioned that Masuaki probably didn't have a future at West Ham because he probably dropped a third choice behind Cresswell and uh, we've got uh, Zinchenko on loan this season from Man City literally moments after stopping recording Porto came in with a loan bid so he's gone to Porto for a season long loan Masuaku you know, they're paying most of his wages, which is not too bad at all. And yeah, he's getting, hopefully, some first-team football for them. Of course, last episode, I showed you Zinchenko and I showed you Richarlison, who we've signed from Everton. Added on to that, we have a central defender. Abdou Diallo has been signed from Paris Saint-Germain, a 25-year-old French central defender who, you know, very good tackling and marking, 15s for both of those. And he's a quick uh, defender as well, which is going to be nice for him getting backwards. Uh, he's determined as well, good teamwork, very brave, uh, ambitious personality, looks good. Um, not really the, the centre-back that I wanted. I wanted one that had, like, good sort of dribbling. Uh, his passing is not too bad, so he can be a good ball-playing defender. But I wanted someone who could play libero, you know, about as good as Declan Rice, which we weren't, unfortunately, able to get. Uh, but Diallo's come in from PSG, £11.5 million, pounds, uh, not too bad. Um, he was transfer listed by PSG, uh, as was another um, centre-back that they had. But we've gone with Diallo, and he's yet to play for me. Uh, he did have a bit of a hamstring problem when we signed him, so uh, waiting for that to heal up, and then he should be ready to go. He was on the bench in our last game, but hasn't featured yet. And then on top of the Zinchenko loan, we have got another loan from the Premier League, and it's Divock Origi from Liverpool. 
He was transfer listed by Liverpool. £29 million pounds they wanted him. I thought that was a bit hefty. And it was also deadline day. So um, I think, you know what, it may have been difficult to get that over the line. So we've gone with a loan move. And then we've got an optional future fee of, um, I believe it's 27 million. No, it's 28 million. So yeah, he's professional. Mentors are good. Uh, very good first touch. Uh, finishing, not too bad. 13, I would like that to be a bit higher, but 13's okay. Uh, he's got good technique and has a good dribble at the ball. So I think he might be used out wide. He might be used up front. He's a bit like Richarlison. He can play sort of anywhere across the front three, really. And hopefully he can do well. Got seven goals for Liverpool last season. Didn't do too badly at all. But hopefully he can do a job for us for West Ham. The transfer window is now closed. So we can't make any more signings until January. Anyway, uh, time to go through the games we played off camera. We started things off with a great 3-1 win at home against Tottenham. Really, really good result here and a great performance. Um, a match that I think we deserve to win and we did so. As Sebastian Ale scored inside a minute, very early goal for us, and Ale gets his first goal of the season uh, inside a minute. Great start, and it got better. Emi Bundia, his first goal of the season, 17th minute, picking up where he left off last season with his eight goals, and he's got two in this one because he also scored in the second half. No clean sheet though, Spurs did get a goal back uh, just before half an hour, and that was Son who um, got on the end of a set piece. And as we mentioned, Brindia did get a second goal and that came on 70 minutes. Um, great performance here, a match I think we deserve to win. We did win, um, very impressive. Then came the match against the champions, Arsenal. Won the Premier League last year. And these are the matches that we just can't get anything in because I don't really know how to set this team up against the big teams away from home. It's really hard to do so. Like, do you go for it? Do you go defensive? We did try counter-attacking for a while in this game, which did get us a goal, but... Other than that, we really didn't offer much here. It was all Arsenal. They were 3-0 up inside 25 minutes. They got three goals in about five minutes. Clement Longley, new signing from uh, Barcelona, got the first goal. And then we gave away a penalty, which was uh, Zinchenko giving that away. Uh, Aubameyang converted that. Uh, and then it was Pepe getting Arsenal's other two goals. One on 25 minutes and one just after the hour. And as mentioned, we did get one goal. Richarlison with his first West Ham goal on 35 minutes was the only uh, positive thing to take from this game. And then we faced Manchester United. Like I said, we had a tough run of fixtures to start things off. We lost 2-0 at London Stadium to Man United. Uh, first half was goalless. We were doing okay. Unlucky not to get a goal from this one. I think we played well, but unfortunately no goals for us. Uh, in the second half, United played two goals. Marcus Rashford on 50 minutes. And then Hakan Chalanoglu scored to make it 2-0 uh, with about 10 minutes left of normal time. Chalanoglu's new signing for Man United. Uh, they've been very busy. They've got him. They've got Otavio. They've got Ashraf Hakimi. Yeah, Man United have been very busy. But after two straight defeats, we did get back to winning ways with a 2-1 home win against Newcastle United. Tough game this one. Newcastle, unfortunate not to get a point from this. Uh, we scored late on with our winning goal. Uh, took an early lead. Thomas Sotek with a goal uh, in about seven and a half minutes to make it 1-0. In the second half, Newcastle did equalise. They had a couple of chances and could have got a goal before then. And uh, they did eventually score. Alan Sam Maximum with lots of space out on the right-hand side. Cut inside and shot it past Fabianski to equalise. But we did uh, manage to get all three points. Damari Gray won it for us with an 89th minute goal uh, to make it 2-1. And then we had our first game in our Europa League group. And it was against Nizhny Novgorod, the side from Russia, who I discovered qualified for this competition by winning Russia's Cup, the domestic cup. Despite the fact they're not even in the Russian Premier League. They're in the second tier in Russia. Didn't even get relegated. A, a team that wasn't even in the Premier League won Russia's domestic cup. It would be the equivalent of like Brentford winning the FA Cup or something like that. So yeah, a bit of a, a strange one in Russia. But we managed to win 4-1 at home. Jared Bowen, very impressive with this one. Uh, a first half hat trick for him, with the third of which was from the penalty spot. Really, really impressive for him. And it's first appearance of the season as well. He had a really fun day out against the Russians. Uh, Carlos Fernandez added a fourth on 39 minutes. We were 4-0 up in the first half. Second half was a little bit more pedestrian. Um, Nizhny did get a consolation goal through Leontjev. Uh, a team entirely made up of fake players, by the way. Grayed out players, which don't really even exist. So uh, to even concede was a bit disappointing. But yeah, 4-1, three points to start things off. So I'm not worried about us finishing bottom of this group. Um, hopefully we don't finish third. It's going to be tough to get through with Marseille and Celtic being the other two teams. So that brings us on to today and Aston Villa. We will get a couple of Europa League games in now and then. I think after this, I think we will take on Marseille because we haven't had a Europa League game yet and I'd like to get one or two on camera. This is the team that won against Nizhny. I think we're going to try and change it a little bit. We've had a few injury problems. Um, 
quite a handful actually. Felipe Anderson's out for up to three months with a broken foot. Not what we want. Uh, Richarlison had a bit of a knock. He might be fit to play today. Zinchenko is out with an ankle injury, but he hasn't had the best start to his West Ham career. And Ale's also got a bit of a knock, so he's going to be missing today. All right, we're going to give Diallo his debut today as a ball playing defender. He's going to replace uh, Gonzalo Cardozo. I'm going to go Cresswell as left wing back. Um, you haven't Anderson played out there before. I'm going to start Gray over Bundia, just to give Bundia a bit of a rest. We're going to start Damari Gray. He scored against Leeds. Okay, so Villa, um, any new players here? Yerry Mina, the signed in from Everton, who of course got relegated, as we saw. Uh, they've also got Jens Tornstra, Nemanja Matic, uh, and Mitrovic from Fulham as well. Josh King also on the bench. Okay, Villa have been pretty busy. Okay, off we go. Let's see if we can make it back-to-back -back wins on camera. Ben Johnson with a throw. We're putting our black third kit here, I think. Of course, Villa's claret tends to match with ours, or clash with ours. Villa on the attack here, Mitrovic. And Diallo heads it away. His first appearance in a West Ham shirt today. Tornstra looking for Grealish and finds Grealish. And it's a good save by Fabianski in the end. Tornstra to Matty Cash. John McGinn. And a header on goal by Mitrovic. And it's just over. Villa with a couple of chances. Well, half-time... That first half was all Villa. We barely got going. We have one shot. Give the fans something to cheer. Okay, a couple of players looking motivated, but we haven't really done too much so far. We're going to change up the passing a little bit, go not quite as short. We're going to push that defensive line up. We're going to get stuck in. Uh, we're going to go to a standard width. Okay, second half. We're going to fire them up because we didn't really see much in that first half. Cresswell's not doing too well. Front three hasn't really had much to do. So hopefully we can see some improvements in this second period. Here's Matty Cash for Villa. Goes long, looks for Mitrovic, finds Mitrovic. Here's Ole Yinka. And Joshua King's got lots of space on the left. Goes for goal when it's just the wrong side of the post. Right, let's try and force them inside then. Because obviously they've got a lot of space out wide there. We were a bit too narrow there for my liking. Ben Johnson with a throw. Thomas Suchek. Uh, that's a foul by Matic, surely. That's going to be a red card, I think. It is. It's a straight red card for Nemanja Matic. And... Villa forced into a change. Daniel and Marty has replaced Mitrovic. Right. Now that we have that man advantage, hopefully we can get something from this. Here's Cash. Good tackle by Jared Bowen. That was a great tackle, actually. Can we get something from this? He could set through Carlos Fernandez, or he could go himself. And he has gone himself, but Amy Martinez makes the save. Okay. First corner that we're seeing for us. Damari Gray's with it. Headed away by Yeri Mina. Ben Johnson will chase this down. There's a good game going on at Newcastle. 2-2 two, two against Man City. Right. 63 minutes. I feel like a change is needed. We're not really creating too much here. Okay. We're going to bring on Buendia for Gray. We're going to change Fernandez up a little bit. Maybe go, maybe go pressing forward, which is what we usually use with um, Alaire, who unfortunately is absent today. Johnson uh, gets the ball back from the throw again. So check. And he's gone down. Is that going to be a penalty? Referee is going to VAR. We might get a penalty kick here with 64 minutes played. It is a penalty. Okay. Who's taking this? Um, it didn't even give me a chance to change it. It's Thomas Socek. I think behind Ale and Noble, he is the primary taker. And he's put it in. It's 1-0. Thomas Socek with his second goal of the season to give us a 1-0 lead at Villa Park. And that may be all we need, but hopefully we can get a second goal. We've not been too impressive today, but we get the goal from the penalty spot. Uh, Martinez not too far from it. Went the right way, but it was a good penalty by the Czech midfielder. Okay, we're going to go back to balance. Just try and play it a bit safer for the last sort of 15 minutes of normal time. Here is that goal scorer, Socek. There's a good ball for Cresswell. We've got lots of space on this left-hand side and lots of men as well. Hopefully, we can exploit this. That's a great ball for Jarrah Bowen. Can he find someone in the box? Goes back to Cresswell. And Cresswell is going to go down. Nothing given there. And that's not a great clearance by Tornstra either. For Nels. Looking for Brindier, but Shenikov clears it. That's another new signing for Villa. They have been busy. And that's a great ball up to Oli Watkins. And he's fired it past Fabianski. And it's 1-1. Oli Watkins with a fifth goal of the season. He has a, he's had a good start, evidently. Mr. Watkins. 76 minutes. It's 1-1. That wasn't a great ball. And then Tornstra, that, you know what, it was a bad misplaced pass earlier, but that was a great ball up to Watkins. And Fabianski, you know, tried the one-on-one, -on -one, but couldn't get there. Watkins with a good finish past the keeper. 79 minutes. We have got some tired players out there. Socek probably needs to come off. And Bowen's getting a bit tired as well. And we're going to bring on Mark Noble. Four now is just going to move in to be the Mizala. 
And we're also going to bring on a Rigi for Bowen as well. Again, it's been pretty close. We haven't had a great deal of shots, but I feel like those have or could have resulted in more goals. We'll have to wait and see. Here's Declan Rice. Carlos Fernandez to Origi. Can he open his account? No, he can't. Mina clears it. Here's Diallo. Origi. I mean, we're against 10 men here. We really should be doing better than this, shouldn't we? Here's Cresswell. Looks for the cross, but it's blocked. And Origi manages to hold on. Here's Fornells. Oh, it's off the bar, is it? Oh, it's, it's in. I think... Oh, wait. What's the referee going to do here? Was Brandier offside? He didn't look like it. Martinez made a great save there as well. I thought it hit the woodwork, but I think it was um, I think it was um, saved by Martinez. And Brendia was offside. It's been disallowed. Oh, that's disappointing. Let's see this again then. So Origi managed to hold on. Four nows. I mean, did it hit the bar or did it hit Martinez? It's very hard to tell, but it's not counted. Just stoppage time left. It looks like it's going to be a draw, but considering the circumstances, isn't the greatest. Oh, God, there's a light, late highlight. Oh, no. Oh, Konza heads over. If that had gone in, that would have been disappointing. It's 1-1. Away from home, that's not a bad point. But they had 10 men for over half an hour. So we could have got the win there. And look at the XG as well. We were unlucky not to get a second goal. Buendia did have the ball in the net, but he got disallowed. So that's a shame. Um, no, we avoided defeat. But we could have done a lot better out there. I, I've got to say, I wasn't too happy with that. So that first half was a little bit too slow. We didn't really get going. The time is up for you to guess who the top scorer was last season. Um, there were a few guesses. Uh, Chris Wood was guessed from Burnley. Uh, Callum Wilson, I mean, he did get some goals from Newcastle, but was not top scorer. Someone guessed Oli McBurney from Sheffield United. And you know what? You had the right team, but the wrong player. Because the top scorer last season was Sheffield United's Lise Mousset. Not the player that I was expecting to get top scorer. 20 league goals and the winner of the Golden Boot last season, Lise Mousset. And Sheffield United, who finished, where did they finish? Like 10th place? 11th place they finished. And they had the Golden Boot winner. That was a bit of a surprise for me. But yeah, nobody won the £10. So um, yeah, no one's going to get it because no one guessed it. Before we go today, it is Thursday. So there will be a featured Thursday before we go. But let's have a look at our upcoming fixtures. I think we are going to do Marseille next time. But yeah, as I said, it is Thursday. So time for our featured Thursday created. So, so far, we've had Dodgy Gamer. We've had Kahuna Gaming. A featured Thursday, you know, it's not just for smaller creators. You know, it, it, it's, for, it's for creators that I, I enjoy watching. Like Proudy, who's today's featured Thursday creator. Proudy is one of my favourite creators and someone that I try and watch every video from because I think he's one of the funniest people in this community. Very, very funny. Uh, he's playing as Wiccan Wanderers for FM21 with his um, long running, attempting not to get sacked save. Proudy is notoriously bad at Football Manager, let's fair to say. Um, he's, you know, been relegated. He's lost several jobs. So, um, you know, so far with Wickham, as I've seen, he's been getting some results and he's been getting some wins. I'm not going to spoil too much, but Proudly's videos are very, very entertaining and they're very short as well. Most of them are sort of under 10 minutes, as you can see. So, um, yeah, you know, he, try, he, he, he crams a lot of content into a very small, uh, much shorter video. You know, football manager, vid football manager videos generally a sort of 15 to 20 minutes, maybe a bit longer for stuff like transfers. But, you know, he gets all this stuff in inside 10 minutes. I think it's very well put together. Graphically as well, it's fantastic. So he's on about 7.3k subscribers. So go out there, give him a subscribe. Um, he's genuinely, genuinely one of the funniest people in this community. So, uh, yeah, go and check him out. Uh, but that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, drop a like down below. Leave comments if you haven't done so already or if you're new. Do subscribe and turn on notifications. Next episode, we're going to have some Europa League football on camera as we face Marseille off camera. We have that Carabao Cup game against Nottingham Forest. We also face Celtic away from home in the Europa League. And we have some league games against Chelsea and Leicester as well. So a few tough ones out there. Uh, but yeah, we're going to face Marseille next time. But for now, thank you very much for watching and I will see you soon. Goodbye.